Brilliant. Uh, well, thank you everybody for for coming to um, our CAS um, primary meeting, and. Um, We've got quite a whole sort of host of things, but like every time we have these, you know, uh, if we if we get to a certain point and we want to dive off somewhere else, then that's cool. You know, that's that's what it's all about. Everybody's got agenda and questions, and some of the best ones we've had, let's be honest, have gone off in totally different directions, <laughs> and that's fine. I mean, I've got I've got first of all on here. Oh, actually, before I go, does everybody want to just introduce themselves? Um. Andy, do you want to go first? Uh, yeah, I can go first. So um, I guess it's mostly for Jane's benefit, as uh, I have seen you before. Um, I'm a software engineer. I work uh, as a researcher uh, for Qualcomm, who are the world's biggest supplier of innards for mobile phones. So you're probably using some of our technology, uh, one way or the other. Um, I'm also a school governor at our local primary school, and I have four nearly primary age children um, so have a number of vested interests in uh, what we're doing with CAS. Thanks Andy and it has to be said Andy's um, always regularly attended and uh, and been really good for some ideas and stuff too. Uh, Graham? Uh, yes okay I'm a head of ICT I don't know if that term still exists anymore you know <laughs> uh, head of computing probably um, at St John's College School in Cambridge and have been teaching computing and ICT for for nigh on thirty years now, I suppose, um, with a, a sort of specialist interest in in computer control, um, control technology in the sort of primary age range. Thanks for that, Graham and um, Jane. Oh, hi, I'm um, I'm a, uh, an infant school teacher, so um, I teach tiny little children and. Just generally across the curriculum, but I'm also an ICT coordinator at a big infant school in, in Brighton, and um, I'm actually an ex techie. So I used to be an analyst, a developer, or a programmer, all those kind of things, and um, I'm kind of involved with CAS and all the, the initial teacher training stuff. And I suppose I'm just really interested in sharing ideas with everybody and trying to make it better. An Fantastic. Right. Okay. And um, I'm Phil Bag, and I teach a strand of computing science in four schools at the moment, and we'll be working in five schools next year. So that's fun. Managed to sneak another one in there. Um, oh, somebody sending me weird things, but. Uh, Right, let's ignore that. I don't know who that is. <laughs> I think it's probably someone trying to contact me. But anyway, let's let's ignore that. That's um that that's that's no problems. Um, so obviously the first thing we've got on our agenda really is just to talk about this whole idea of algorithms, and just sort of come up with any sort of cross curricular ideas that we've got or thought about or um, um or tried or done some things with. Um, or or any ideas that we've had just on on the on the sort of topic really, so um, hi, that's uh, hi David. Nice nice to see you. <laughs> Welcome to the group, David. Do you want to introduce yourself really quickly because we're we're just about to talk about um, just sort of go through some of the algorithm stuff. But um, yeah, we've all all the rest of us have introduced ourselves, so go for it. Uh, first of all, can you hear me? Is that working? Yeah, we've got a thumbs up. Cool. Um, hi, I'm David Isles. I'm a year one primary teacher. Um, I'm also um, an ex-IT person, professional, so I've only just come into primary teaching. Um, in the school, we've just put together um, a new scheme of work for ICT and incorporating a lot of computer science and scratch and all that good stuff. So um, that's me. Thanks, David. Um, David was sharing some of his um, good practice um, with, with me via email the, this afternoon. And uh, we, we look forward to sharing some of the good things tonight and um, and also hopefully um, uh, at other um, forum meetings as, as well. So really nice to really nice to see you, David. Well, well done for managing to make it, mate. I know okay, you're sorry, the, there's more of us really, but... <laughs> We'll see how we get on, eh? Yeah, sure. And if you if you need to run, then then go for it. Yeah, it's cool. 
Okay, so does anybody want to just? I mean, probably convention-wise, um, for those who haven't done it much before, if if you if you if someone else is talking, you don't want to come in, just give us a wave on the screen, and then I'll just bring you in as quickly as possible. Or obviously, if you see a break in the conversation, then go for it. It's only five of us, so so that's no problems. So um, does anybody want to kick off with any sort of basic algorithm ideas or things that they've done that they've enjoyed? Right, go for it, Jane. That's that's brilliant. Um, We've kind of tried to introduce just the word algorithm. Hello, David. I'm interested in what you're doing because I'm a, I'm a year one teacher as well, and I've come from IT, and we've just rewritten our scheme of work and are introducing computing, so we've maybe got a lot of things in common. Um, and we, my class, have come up with the idea of um, an alligator, thing, and they do a little dance and they kind of snap away and. They've kind of come up with the idea that an algorithm is to just get things done. So we're kind of introducing it at um, in key stage one, just to be an idea of it's a word, it's something to do with computers and something to do with an alligator, and um, it's to do with getting things done. And then as we're going, we've put that onto our learning platform, so that other classes and other year groups can kind of take that idea forward. Um, but I'd be interested to know then how people in primary so in junior schools how that kind of develops in terms of levels mm. does anybody want to come in on that one i'm having trouble hearing i don't know whether anybody else is yeah uh, uh jane jane's is the quietest but i could hear her quite well to be to be fair did could any everybody else hear jane or Can i do it again um yeah go for it <laughs> okay um so we've my class, my little year ones, they came up with this idea that an, alg uh, an alligator was the only animal they could think of that might help them remember this really weird word of algorithm. And then they made up a little weird dance that was to do with making steps and it all to be doing with getting things done. And I can kind of see how we can, we can kind of move it on a little bit in key stage one, but I was just interested how that would then become more formal in terms of the abstractions through key stage two. Yeah, does anybody, does anybody want to come in on that one? No. <laughs> um, <laughs> Graham, go for it. Well, I was just interested in that you do you do introduce the word algorithms, um, and whether actually it's necessary to do that. I I don't know really. I mean. Um, I, I don't tend to use the word, but then I haven't done a lot of algorithm work um, with with the children as yet. So, you know, maybe it's something I should do. I only I only introduced it because it said it was going to be in the the c curriculum. You know, the one that we put up. <laughs> yes. So, oh, we'll better try that. See if it works. Um, so we I just tried it to see if they could even get a handle on the idea of you know it's like phonemes or all these other. Mm. Options make them learn and mm. if they could say okay if it was an alligator yeah they were happy with it <laughs> just just briefly uh, mark um really nice t to to see you joining us mark everybody else has in introduced themselves can you can you just um say a couple of words just say who you are and then we'll carry on chatting about algorithms go for it oh uh, we, we can't hear you at all at the moment mark okay can anyone hear mark no, okay. I I tell you what, Mark. We'll come back to you. Um, you might have a microphone issue there. Um, okay, right. Anyone else on algorithms? Anybody else want to add? I I must admit, I oh, go on. Anyone else, or or I'll go in. Okay. I mean, I I had a, a fascinating chat with um, John Woolard on the train a couple of weeks back, and um, I've been sort of thinking through the algorithm thing a little bit more. And he was trying to persuade me that actually I should do a lot more computing science away from programming. <laughs> and I was saying how much fun I was having with programming. So, but but it was a good chat, and I actually learned some things, which is which is always cool. Um, and from that, I've come up with a, a few sort of simple ideas. I mean, I've always done stuff associated with the logo work we do. So we've always done things like um, routes across classrooms and trying to find the most efficient way somewhere or even to the uh, sort of journeys around the school um, with the kids sort of working and trying to work at sort of uh, different step paths for that um, 
and the kids have always enjoyed that sort of stuff. But I, I've got a few ideas that I'm going to have a go at with some year five and sixes. Um, um, one of them was to do with um, setting out a snakes and ladders board. So can they write a set of instructions, not to play snakes and ladders, but just to design a board, which would put X amount of snakes on and X amount of ladders on, and would make sure that the, the head of the ladder never touches the you know the tail of a snake and all the rest of it could they actually come up with some a sort of step-by-step -step guide with that maybe with some sort of random element in there as well um, and now actually quite a few of them have done some scratch work and they've re met things like if and else the sort of the idea about selection um, I, uh, those sort of choices thing I, I, I think that might be a possibility but I'm, I'm gonna have a go at a couple of different levels and see see where it sort of fits you know, or whether it's too complex you know have to see really suck that one and see mm. um a good friend of mine had a, had the idea of of have, talking to the kids about the sort of class seating arrangement that they that they have you know i mean obviously there's all there's almost sort of uh, sets of rules that the teacher wants and sets of rules that the kids want you know the kids would like to sit next to their friends you know, et cetera, et cetera. The teacher wants the most amount of work out of the kids, you know, the kids to be the quietest, et cetera, et cetera. But, but almost this idea that we would start from a, a, a class list and see, um, so the, the challenge for the kids would be to write a set of rules which would see everybody in the class in such a way that it, it was the best seating plan, really. So I, I now I have no idea. I haven't done any formal stuff with that, but that I'm, I'm sort of working on those two as something, you know, ideas to have a go at, really. Um, and I might be a bit off the mark, <laughs> like with all these things, or, or, or some of it might work. I, I'm guessing that my first reaction is that the snakes and ladders thing, I, I, I can see that as an easier sort of closed option in my head. So um, I suspect the kids would find that easier. So that's probably my first way in, really. But um, anyway, just, um, just, just a thought there. But, um, Thanks for that. <laughs> Dave's just written, uh, Dave, do you want to come in on that? Go for it. Yeah, I was just thinking it's great to get real kind of practical experience and uh, with friends and stuff. That's something they're really passionate about <laughs> and mm. fairly vocal as well. So you definitely get interested to do that. I'm just thinking about year sixes at the moment, actually. <laughs> I think that'd be a bit of a laugh for me as well, <laughs> if nothing else. But that, that's something they're keen to kind of explore the different opportunities as well. So I think that's a really good idea. Well, I wonder whether whether a couple of us can go and try it and 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 come back to the group and feed feedback and maybe maybe just write it up from the, from two or three of us, you know. Um, I'll definitely try it and see how many kids I got left. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now that 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 sounds brilliant. Um, okay, any anybody else want to come in on the algorithm? I don't know. Um, I just wondering, should we? Is the idea that we just introduce the word? And that they associate it from a very early age with just any instructions or anything that gets something done. Because in, obviously in literacy, we do lots of work on instructions. So should we be looking in a cross-curricular way whenever we talk about instructions to then make a link and say, oh, in computing or in computer science, this would be achieved with this word algorithm? I don't, I don't know. What 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 do people think? What's what's the any anybody want to come in on that one? Yeah, go for it, Dave. David, sorry. I'm I, I'm just thinking generally with year ones that it, it, it's a weird one, isn't it? Because in phonics we're talking about split diagrams yeah. <laughs> as an example of a yeah. you know, and, and they take that on board. But then is that the essence of what they're learning? I mean, yeah. really, we're we talking about concept. I I. I, I don't care whether they know the term split digraph, but I care if they can read phonetically. Yeah, so really, we should apply the same thought, I suppose. And I feel mm. that's the thing that if we're doing, if we're showing them how they can break something down a, a function into steps, mm. we make the link and say, well, you could design a computer program that could do this. So it's kind of it's, whether it's an algorithm or not, it's just the idea that you can decompose that into. steps steps and that there's a mathematical or a computing element to it. I, I, do, I don't know whether it's too young. Yeah, I, what you were I think at, at year one, if there's, a, if there's a cardboard box on it that says, I'm a computer and we're able to talk through a year, <laughs> a cardboard box saying, do this, do that, that'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? I don't know. 
I don't know what, you know, in terms of progression, when... I was just about to say, the progression question across all of Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2, is, is that something bombed out or something that we need to look at? No, I mean, um, unless anyone else wants to go, I think that's quite a big thing, really. And I, I'm, I wonder also, at some point, you know, at the very basics, you've got this sort of step-by-step -step guide to solving a problem. But then, of course, you, 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 uh, the complexity comes to sort of what type of things you use to do that. So, you know, do you use a choice in there? Do you, um, do you um, introduce rules? You know, so if, I, if I'm doing this, I'm going to do something else, you know, um, in there. And obviously, that brings in quite a lot more complexity, really. Um, but I don't know, I don't think any of us, to some extent, know how much of this is until we almost suck it and see, really, and try some things and see what type of things the kids come up with as well. Um, but, I, but I don't know. Does anybody else want to come in, Andy? Oh. Graham? Sorry, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I mean, I think really, <laughs> you know, the people who are going to decide what is appropriate to teach at this age level are probably us actually I mean mm. <laughs> you and you and I felt I mean we wrote the programs of study so who who you know who else knows what um, you know the DFE intend us to to teach now I mean I think you're quite right I think that the best way to do it is actually to put as much of it in front of the, the children as possible and see how well they cope with it and that will tell us how far we can go with this um, at um, at year, year in year one, I mean, I guess it's going to be like you know you're making a piece of toast kind of thing. It's going to be, you know, little fun examples of how you how you take something that they do regularly in everyday lives, make a cup of tea, whatever it is, or a simple story, and you turn that into an algorithm. But I think once we get to kind of you know year year five, year six, I mean, certainly from from control technology, there's an awful lot of stuff that the children can do there. You know. Um, working out how to switch on traffic lights and you know in the right sequence when somebody presses a button and how long they should mm. you know stay on for before they turn back again I mean it's, th those algorithms are intuitive because they know what traffic lights are and they kind of understand how they work so if you say all right now you know write a write a plan for that and that they're going to do it quite easily um, mm. <clears throat> that, I mean you know, I think it's a very good idea, you know, for people like us to do that with children, see what happens, and then report back. I think that's actually what's going to decide at the end of the day what is taught, you know, when we're teaching algorithms in, in the primary age range. Mm. Yeah, no, I, to I totally agree. And I, I actually think there's, a, there's probably a wider issue for this group, really. I, I think we almost need to... Um, to almost to, to share to do this sort of regular sharing of practice and ideas and what we've done and you know what's worked and you know on certain things I, I can I can very much see this primary group if people are happy with this p developing part of this about sort of sharing practice and and working on consensus and what works and you know those sort of issues really um, and then of course feeding back into the the bigger thing because there's a lot of people out there who don't know what to do at all yeah. so we may be two steps ahead <laughs> you know? and that's that's good enough at the moment you know um, I mean Phil the ITT site who can I see that at the moment is it just people who've been w contributing to it oh um, the, the <coughs> stuff, we, stuff we've all been putting up I think it's um, closed at the moment but I think after after this Thursday's yeah. meeting, I think for those who don't know, um, Jane, um, Graham, and myself have been working on a little group um, with the teacher training um, um, college providers on um, resources to teach computing. So we've sort of been making a sort of a, a Google Sites on that with a lot of sort of examples and resources and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And and pretty much. The last meetings on Thursday, and I think then it will just go onto the web somewhere, hopefully, for everyone to see. I, th I think that was the idea. I mean, obviously, Jane or Graham do tell me otherwise if I'm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think so. It's supposed to go live after that meeting, isn't it? Yeah. So hopefully, um, it's a pity in some ways that that's not updatable and uh, carries on the resource because there's some quite good stuff on there. But yeah. there we go. That's um, 
I don't we think we get a lot of say in that. So. <laughs> no. Um, but whether we could take it somehow and, and shape it to become more of a CPD resource for mm. existing teachers, because I'm in a really big infant school. We've got an eight form infant school, and so I've got a lot of teachers who I need to somehow have some familiarity, familiarity with what algorithms are and computational thinking and programming ideas, even if it's just for them in year two to have an idea of where the children are going in in, pri in junior schools, which we, have, mm. of course, we have to know for every other subject. Yeah, yeah. Computing. Um, but it's really whether we can take that, all that lovely stuff that we've, that, you know, we've kind of cobbled together and brought together and we can and move that forward. But I, you know. mm. So. Mm. No. Okay, so um, I'm getting the feeling, John, lovely to see you. <laughs> um, I'm getting the feeling that we've sort of talked through the, the algorithm ideas that we had. Um, and John, uh, a couple of us are going to go and try some of those ideas and then report back to the group and, and come back with some, some thinking on that. Um, John, I was just explaining at the beginning of the session that you're the sort of king of algorithms. So... Um, I suppose you haven't been in, in on the rest of the discussion, but... Um, He's uh, sitting very still. Yeah. Yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll come back to John. Um, right, let, let's move on down the, the agenda. Um, now, next thing we've got on the agenda was just this idea of promoting... Oh, there's two of John now. Okay. Okay, th this next idea is promoting the new curriculum in primary schools. Um, so, has anybody got any thoughts or, or ideas or ways that we um, can promote, you know, good ideas and, and positive things that we do um, in the primary sector? Does anybody want to come in on that one? Jane, go for it. <laughs> Um, me again, sorry. Um, Genevieve is a secondary school teacher and she's um, uh, been very active down here in Brighton and um, she's just run at my school, so at, at an infant school, she's run a cat hub um, expert, I don't know what they're called, expert teacher, whatever it is, mm. uh, scratch CPD and it was free for anybody, any of the infant sorry, the junior teachers, infant and junior teachers who could come along. And we ran it as two twilight sessions uh, on um, sequential Mondays from four till six. And they came along and she kind of went through Scratch, which they were very, they were interested because it was a, it was a programming kind of module or it was mm. something that they could, something that they wanted to know about. But then on the back of that, she actually went through the Key Stage 1 and the Key Stage 2 curriculum mm. and started to talk about some of the components that were within that. And um, it was really good. We were full. Uh, mm. and we were When we tried it before Christmas, it was Timberweed. We didn't have <laughs> anything at all. But because it was advertised just after the Grove announcement and the new... Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got a big take up. Yeah, and we also managed to get it put out through the heads TAs, which I think is probably the way to get to mm. T coordinators by scaring yeah. the bejesus out of the heads. Um, <laughs> so um, when we tried to do it just through local authority links, it was a waste of time. Yeah, yeah. So that that would be my hint and tip would be get your head to think that they're kind of flying some kind of flag um, and then get it through the personal assistant. But it was really successful. Yeah, that's good. So that, that would be my hint and tip. Okay. Um, go for it, David. Uh, um, I was just thinking, I think the new curriculum is the way forward, isn't it? I, I just think next year is going to be fraught of CPD for everything going, isn't it? So if if... If there's a, a teacher somewhere that can pick you back onto the back of that, I mean, we're already being asked to look at the new curriculum. Even you know, we're, it's kind of on agendas of staff meetings, but there's no action required. But you just know as soon as next year starts, every week we're going to be reviewing something. So that 
on the back of that to a head teacher. I think that's the way to do it. Also, we've got um, clusters of schools. So I was thinking about setting up with our cluster, um, you know, more of you together. And if one person could share experience, that's great. Um, I also agree about local authority. That it's all about buying iPads, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but as far as I can see. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Uh, Andy, do you want to come in on, on the sort of any ideas on the governor side of things or? Yeah, so I was just trying to think as as because I can I can certainly see challenges in 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 primary schools where there's no strong computing advocate within the staff. Even in relatively large schools, certainly in primary, that seems to be more common. And I think tackling this is going to be difficult. I think the um, idea about using the clusters is a good one, and I I, I don't know. What sort of coverage CAS has if we were to look at where we can get to through through the clusters? Um, but we'll, yeah, I mean, we, we need to find ways to get into the schools and uh, uh, maybe through some of the initiatives like um, Co Club. And I, I've come, I'm trying to come think of its name. There's another initiative that, that is trying to sort of pair up practitioners with schools, um, whether we can leverage some of that to get through but um, mm. I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a difficult problem um, seems to be particularly more difficult with primary than it is with secondary yeah no no agree I mean we've um, uh, in in 10 days time Graham and I and I did invite Jane back <laughs> she couldn't make it uh, Graham and I are doing um, we, we invited uh, um, in 10 we invited a hundred and um, 50 people down to Southampton and we've got 120 of them with primary yeah. so uh, and we're doing some stuff on CPD and on all sorts of um, aspects of the of the new curriculum interesting I think it, the, the whole county thing can very much depend on your on your county because Hampshire have been really positive and very very supportive of all we've done um, so, and but interestingly, the the IT inspector in Hampshire uh, has a computer science background, mm -hmm. so you know it was quite pro pro what we were doing and, and and more than happy to push it. But I I I know what you mean. It just depends on where you are and <laughs> and what people are into really. But um, yeah, that's no, good. Uh, one of the things we're going to do at the end of that is we're going to use our we've got good links with Southampton University and we're going to um, we're going to we, we've been doing sort of secondary CAS hub meetings and what we're going to do Southampton are going to carry on um, hosting these but um, we're going to split them into primary and, and secondary and run things like the scratch training or logo or you know other bits and pieces maybe do some stuff on algorithms as well so with the idea and probably run one of those every sort of half term um so it's very similar to your cluster idea but just sort of opening up to slightly bigger group really uh, so we'll, we'll feed back to to how that's um you know how that how that's getting on really but um because if you can get some kind of model then that's something mm. that then lead teachers could pick up and could mm. i think that would be really cool yeah, certainly we'll bear that one in mind, and certainly the resources that we make from that day. I know Graham's making some stuff as well. I'll more than happily share any of the of the things we do for that, and also for the for the clusters we do after that. So um, yeah, you know, cool. put them in CAS properly so that if anyone wants to use them, they can. Yeah, Graham. You, oh, sorry. Um, yeah. Graham and then Andy. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Well, um, I mean, the, the big problem is that um, there's, what, 25,000 primary schools and um, there's far too few of us. I mean, no matter, you know, how many kind of clusters we kind of set up and promote, we're, we're only going to kind of scratch the surface. And I think, really, um, you know, teachers are going to have to do quite a bit of the, this themselves. So if we can create really good online resources, and when I've talked to teachers, actually what they want to see is rather than kind of pro programs of study with in-depth ex in explanations of kind of technical terms, they want to see some ideas that they can just kind of yeah. take straight into the classroom and use with the kids. Tried and tested stuff, you know, um, maybe with some examples of the work the children have produced that's the kind of re resource that mm. actually makes for very good CPD 
but it's also giving them something that they can use straight away. And I think, you know, a lot of the stuff on that ITT site is, is, is that sort of stuff. Yeah. Some of, quite a lot of it is on the, the CAS site as well. But we've discussed this before. It's, um, it's a question of, you know, being able to see the wood for the trees. It, there's now so much stuff there, there's almost kind of too much. It's, <laughs> it's really helping teachers to find what's really good on there. Yeah. Um, so I think those online resources are going to be absolutely essential for teachers who are either too far away from a, you know, a, a hub or cannot make a teach meet because they've got, you mm -hmm. know, children at home or whatever. You know, in those 25,000 primary schools, there's probably two or three teachers, maybe even more, that will be involved in this sort of stuff. Might be every class teacher has to do some of it. So, mm. You know, it's just a, a massive training requirement. And yet, because a lot of this computer science is actually pretty simple stuff, if if it's got if you've got clear explanations and good good classroom activities, I think the teachers can you know they can train themselves by and large. Mm. Mm. No, I agree with you. Um, I'm sorry. Um, should we go for Andy and then Mark? <laughs> sorry, Andy, so, Andy then. Yeah, so I was, I was just going to ask because I know we discussed um, some time ago and some contact was made to look at making the or some areas of the CAS community site publicly visible because I think one of the, the challenges that, that I've, I've seen is, yeah. is people being well, feeling that they want to put the energy into signing up for something and maybe not yeah. quite sure particularly if they're not from an IT background <clears throat> what it is and it, it seems there's a lot of good resources there but they're hard to access. Mm. No I, I totally agree with you. I know from talking to to the CAS board and probably Graham would know the same thing and um, just that they are considering this quite seriously and they have yeah. actually asked their guys to their guys to make the website to investigate the whole idea of uh, almost a tick that we can put on and then those resources will become public facing if you as you do which I would pretty much do all of mine and I suspect most of us would you know take the primary stuff um, I think at the moment they're a little too w worried about um, quality control to some extent <laughs> I know that well, sounds uh, they're, 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 they're almost saying oh well, we don't want to put anything out too public facing just in case it's seen as being you know the ultimate thing for, for, for what CAS does and I'm trying to make the case that actually to some extent none of us are going to be experts at this early level we all have to go through this sort of trial and error and finding out what works and, and all the rest of it but you know uh, I mean uh, can we not mitigate that with some sort of, um, I don't know, I mean, so the, the way you would conventionally do it from sort of, from yeah. my, my back, my as a or researcher is, yeah. well, Sorry, as a researcher, you do peer review, right? Mm. So yeah. you would, you would expect other people who are in the field and have knowledge of the state of the art would mm. peer review your work and, and give it an assessment of quality. And maybe that's what we need. And, and we've got, Several folks on the, the, the chat here tonight who are, I'm, I'm sure you guys are working together, looking at each other's work and picking the best of it. So that there will be a good basis for for doing a, that kind of review and publishing the stuff that gets enough points. <laughs> actually, that, that's that's actually a really good idea, um, Andy. I, I think that may be something that we could. Maybe that would be the ultimate way of sort of twisting the arms to, to be able to push this. A little bit more so um, yeah love, love that sorry um, Mark you were gonna come in earlier and I don't want to leave you out go, on, go for it hopefully the mics working yes okay. <laughs> um, yeah it's, it's two questions really is um, do you know of any commercial organizations that are going to step into the space and possibly um, co-opt it and, and, and claim to have the you know the solution to everyone's problems um so yeah that that's question one do we do we know of any plans by any of the um the people who produce software and charge people for it to um um i don't think uh, it's going to come from from software houses it's going to be publishers publishers are yeah. going to uh, i mean they're already you could bet your life in fact i've already heard you know odd rumors 
but they're desperately trying to turn, you know, produce produce um, sort of teacher guides and stuff um, for the new program of study. I mean, but how good those will be is anybody's guess, you know. Yeah, well, that that's my concern, really, that if they get in, if 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 the CAS um, yeah, group is, is, is reticent in putting this stuff forward, that the the gap is going to be filled by somebody who claims to have the solution, and that might not be what what's needed. Yeah. And yeah. the first people who go to press, they will become the kind of the, you know, the 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 default kind of resource for teachers to turn to, and, yeah, and you know, the concern is it it could be very poor. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. No, I think that's a really good point. Um, go for it, Jane. <laughs> well, I just saw some stuff that Espresso had produced. Um, where heavy espresso uses, and it's a very expensive resource. But they've created a little programming environment, and it, and I I don't like it. Maybe I'm being a little bit unkind, but it just feels like they've created all these bizarre abstractions, which kind of take the children off into mm. like odd kind of places. Um, but often espresso do have nice um, little videos and clips that I could see being embedded within the new computing curriculum. But mm. I completely agree that you can see someone becoming the new QCA. Oh, oh. oh I'm just going to run out now. <laughs> that, that's what's going to happen because that, 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 the, the whole thing is going yeah. on the last two Mondays, all of the different ICT yeah. coordinates were saying, oh, well, what do we replace the QCA with? Yeah. Going, yeah. Oh, wow, well, you can have a nice big project. And they're going, a project? But what about the module? Um, so it's true. I completely agree that people are looking to fill that gap mm. with something that's very prescriptive and rising stars are always mm. there. And I, d I don't know. Is it, is it um, Miles who's involved with rising stars? Yeah, I think I think there's quite a few people out there. I mean, I've heard stuff from Hodder. I've heard stuff from BBC. I mean, it, it, you, you're totally right, Mark. Everybody is, um, you know, baying there to, to put stuff out. And I, I, I think this is a really, your argument is a really good one. If we don't get something out there, or at least release some of our resources, which let's be honest, at least we tried some of these. We, we, we've used them. We've, we've done something with them. They might not be perfect at this point, but they're, they're at least, you know, there's been some trial and error with this. Um, that's not to say that all the manufacturers want, you know, they, they, people will come up with some good stuff, but, but actually you're, you're right. We, we could end up with just, yeah, the new QCA, which is a pretty horrible idea. I, I, I mean, may, I will definitely take this, push this idea, your idea, Mark, and, and sort of put that point to, um, to, to, um, to some of the guys, um, because I think that's a really important one, actually. If you, if you're all right, just take it from this group and just sort of pass it on, really. Yeah. Well, Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. Well, I raised it with Simon Peyton Jones this week, actually, mm. because it was one of the recommendations from the the last ITT meeting, wasn't it? Was yes. That they should do that, but only for their primary. There were there were concerns about teachers putting, um, you know, exam examination assessment materials on yeah. there that then students could get into. But I think our recommendation was it would only be resources that were tagged primary that mm. would would you could access without a CAS account. And if you wanted to access secondary resources and assessment materials and that sort of thing, then you'd have to have an account, which seems to me a very good idea. I mean, if primary children want to go in and look at our assessment materials, absolutely brilliant. You know, we're not going to stop doing that, are we, for that kid? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, has any of us written any assessment stuff yet? Anyway, no. that's, not, that's, that's a that's a whole new discussion. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So so are we all agreed that if um, if Graham and I can really sort of push this side as being something that we all agree that we we knew, we do need that primary publishing mm. through CAS, and I think it, it, there's going to be a period of time if they really can't produce this in X amount of months then we might even look to, to, I don't know, setting up a site ourselves or doing something pretty similar to what we did for ITT, especially if we can't get to that. I don't know. What's your, what's your feelings? Will, will people be happy to sort of put some bits on there and um, contribute? Yeah, I, I actually asked if I could do that. <laughs> yeah. I said, 
oh, we're having all these teachers around. They probably want to have this, 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 and this. And it's like, yeah. It's not clearly what we've been doing, but it's such a it's such a shame not to use it because mm. Wayne, your stuff's fantastic. I've just been stealing it, you know, <laughs> no messing about. Um, but lots of schools do use learning platforms, and they do mm. have CPD pages for their staff. Why shouldn't they be public so that staff across the country can use them? It just seems such a, a waste of people's time to be yeah. making the real. Yeah. And I think with the provisio, as Graham was explaining, that, uh, you know, if the secondary people don't want to publish their stuff, then that's cool. You know, we can understand the reasons for that. But we don't, we're not in that game, really, are we? I mean, there, there might be the odd child in year six who... Who who go and find your resources? But as we, most of us will be more than happy. You know, yeah. go for it. Make as much stuff as you like. You know, yeah. <laughs> and come back and tell us about it. So, you know, um, that's cool. Okay, uh, are, we, are we sort of? Um, can we move on to the next sort of topic, or do, does anybody else want to add anything else on this sort of issue while we're at it? Give us a thumbs up if you're all all right to carry on. Okay, fantastic. All right. Um, I've put in here, um, yeah, uh, I've put in here the idea of the network of excellence, um, and I don't quite know why I've put that in in here, if I'm honest with you. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, does, does anybody want to add anything on this network of excellence? <laughs> okay. It strikes me, unless you're, unless you're like yourself, um, Jane in Brighton, where you've got someone close enough to do something useful for you, that actually it's it's not having a lot of effect on any of us, unless unless you've really got someone, and a lot of it seems very sort of secondary focused anyway. Mm. Uh, um, you know, I mean, um, um. I suppose this has come out of Graham and I were talking about this idea of having um, inst the secondary guys have this sort of master teacher idea, which uh, I think the, the name of it is awful, but let's not let's not get into that. It was bad enough being an advanced skills teacher that that always was horrible <laughs> tag anyway. So the idea of a master teacher, I mean, and I, I don't know, brings up ideas of the Daleks, but let's not go into that. I apologise. I, we were wondering about this idea of maybe sort of having a primary lead teachers, you know, so it, it's not about being the masters of everything, but just, you know, just leading uh, almost of, uh, and I'm I'm wondering, one of the things that we were, we were talking about maybe is, is getting a small group of us together um, and doing this regular sharing um, on a specific issue, you know, say like algorithms or say like um, some of the scratch progression or other issues. Um, and with the idea of sort of disseminating some of those, you know, really just talking through sort of pedagogy and where we're going and how what's working, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, what any any sort of thoughts on that idea? Have I explained it well enough? <laughs> uh, no, it's it's a good idea. I mean, if you've got a small group of people who've prepared to commit a certain amount of time to that, I mean, you could pick off you know each element of the program of study in turn and if you built it over a year you could you could see how you could produce some very useful stuff I mean you could use a kind of forum like this mm. and you know have five or six people discussing how you teach algorithms to year one and that could then be you know that's if that's recorded that's then you know your your teaching resource mm. yeah I mean my, my, my wonder is we, our group at the moment, the sort of size of it and the sort of committed teachers who do, is very small really, let's be honest. Mm. Um, so how do we recruit in the in the very short term enthusiastic but maybe not that knowledgeable people who will join and have a go and, and do some of the resources and, and, you know, any thoughts on that sort of recruitment? I think you know, the idea about clusters, whether there's any way, and maybe not lead, but just those who are kind of prepared to put their head up, really. It's kind of mm. a facilitator or an enabler rather than 
probably going to be somebody who just takes some of Graham's lovely resources or your resources, Phil, and mm. goes, oh, let's go through these together. Mm. Um, so they maybe don't want to feel like they're lead teachers because they probably have got, they don't feel very confident. Mm. But I don't, I don't really know. It's, it, in the end, it's going to be the head teachers, to be quite honest. But if the head teachers are interested, I put a rocket up the thing or ICT coordinators. Mm, mm. Go for it, Mark. Um, yeah, it's another question. Um, <laughs> there was a um, a letter going to the to the heads that that you were preparing. Mm, mm. And uh, what what happened to that? It, it hasn't gone yet, has it? No, um, we 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 basically did as much editing as we could, and we passed it on to the CAS board. Um, so it is actually with them at the moment, um, and maybe that's an area that oh, we need to just push them and ask them and find out, you know, what's happened to that. So yeah, no, I agree. I think it does need to. I th I think they're a little stuck. Okay, this this is being broadcast anyway, but <laughs> um, I I think. <coughs> They're a little stuck in quite what to do with primary. <laughs> you know? I right. think they've got some pretty good ideas of what to do with secondary, but I think, you know, anyway. Well, because I think it is important that that it is led to some extent by the heads. So um, if we're going to get other teachers involved, then it, the heads need to think that it's important to encourage them to do yeah. that, and it becomes part of their you know, development. Yeah, no, I, t I totally agree with you. One of the things we did for the CAS Wessex um, conference we're doing in 10, 11 days or whatever it is, is I emailed every head teacher in the county. And amazingly, we, we filled up within about two weeks because they all went, ah, new curriculum, ah, oh, oh, something, somebody's going to help us. You know? So so, so I, I totally agree with you. I'm pretty sure. In fact, I had, I had um, coordinators, IT coordinators in school come back to me and say, oh, Literally one day they said, "Oh, yeah, no, my head's not that interested." And then two days later, "Oh, my head got this email from Phil Bag <laughs> you know, saying that we could do some stuff, and he wants me to go now." So, so uh, you're right. I, I think the sort of direct approach to heads is quite important, really. Um, I think that's probably something Graham and I need to ch to chase up with the board a bit more. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I totally agree. I think it's only through the heads that you'll you'll get anywhere at all. I mean, I think. I mean, I said to you that I thought the letter should go to the chairs of the the, the governors as well. Yeah. Because you, that way, if you've got a head who doesn't want to engage, you might have a governor who does. Mm. So you know, between the two of them, you know, you're more likely to mm. to mm. to you know get something happening. Um, but it's but you know that's that's how you market it to the schools. Otherwise, you're not going to get to. You, I don't see any other way, actually, of getting to a large number of people. Yeah, no, no, I totally agree with you. Um, I, I think the idea of actually um, getting on and, and promoting to the chair of governors as well, I, I think, is an important one. Because you're right. I mean, I've one of the schools I'm in working with at the moment, the head wasn't that interested in what I was doing, but the chair of governors was pushing it. So of course, you know, the head wants to keep the chair of governors reasonably sweet, <laughs> and hence, you know, when I when I send them, oh, I'll do some computer science. They were interested, so so I think it, you know those sort of things are quite important, really. Um, anybody else want to come in on this one? Okay, thank thanks for that for reminding us about that, Mark. I will definitely send off an email, um, just asking where that's got to, and 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 pushing that side of things. So thank you. I think that's that's very valid, really. I mean, it might be that they're waiting for you know the final programs of study to be published, and maybe they, you know, they they want to see what's going to happen with that before they send a letter out, which is kind of sensible, I suppose. Mm. Although they they did send one to secondary schools before we even had the the draft, so true, true, yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, no, I don't you say no. Um, okay, now John's. If everybody's all right, we just move on. Um, John's um, raised the last point, really, which is about um, key stage two pupils should be taught to describe how internet search engines find and store data. Okay. Um, now, this is probably the surprise package of the um, 
the new draft curriculum. You know, it sort of dropped in, parachuted in from somewhere. Um, I wasn't responsible I for that, I can assure you. <laughs> no, I don't think any of us were. <laughs> I, I think so, someone in government... My friend Les well, no, Carl... I remember, I remember it being discussed at the meeting, and I, I, I questioned it. I, I couldn't really see why that was, was necessary, but anyway, they put it on, so... Yeah, yeah. Any thoughts by anybody? Uh, let's just assume for a second it's it's in there and we can't do anything to change it. I mean, let's be honest, there's still a consultative process, and I, I guess if enough people say, but, you know, let's be honest, uh, I don't get the feeling that a lot of this is to do with consultation. <laughs> but there we go. Anybody else want to come in? Uh, uh, Mark, you wanted to come in, didn't you? Yeah, I, I go for think... it. I think the important part of this is just that the children understand that Google is not the internet. Mm -hmm. um, and so distinguishing between search engines and the gathering of data and, and, and it's held elsewhere, I think is a valid thing to have um, the children learn. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure it needs to go beyond that and the algorithms involved and how you can pay to get yours to the top of the list and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Secondary school, that might be a... I, I totally agree with that. I mean, the children do think that Google's the internet. If you ask them, they'll tell you they're one <laughs> and the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, that's true. And we, we've got to find a way of, you know, ex explaining to them that the internet is not Google and that, you know, um, it's a little bit more complex than that. I, I agree with that, yeah. Mm. So we're going to get year six children to write a search engine? <laughs> Um, I mean, it's interesting. Um, it's not that difficult. Yeah. No. Uh, uh, go on, in, um, go on. Flesh that out for us, Andy, with the technical skills and, and knowledge of yourself. <laughs> um, <laughs> Give us some web spider type sort of things that we can think about, and then this this would be helpful. Go for it. Well, uh, okay. So, um, if, if you're going to do it, where where are you going to start? Um, now, Python seems to be language du jour for, um, for teaching in various scenarios at the moment. So if you're going to write a Python script to write a small search engine, then um, you're going to need a page somewhere. And, 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 and some of us who are older can remember that what, years ago you used to have to go to every search engine and put in your website to tell them that they should come and index your site. These days, they seem to have a habit of just finding them. Um, there are there are other ways, um, but if you have a starting site, then what what's a search engine going to do? It's it's going to look through. Um, it's going to pull down a page, which is like, I think probably about a one liner in Python. It's then going to read certain words off the page, and maybe you do something stupid like every word over six characters long or every six character sequence gets dumped into a dictionary, and a count put against it. Um, and then every time you find something that looks like a link, which is fairly identifiable, and I, I do it using regular expressions, um, and probably in Perl, but then I'm sick and old. Um, but I think you would, you know, th th then you're, you're going to find something that looks like a link, and you're going to go and get that page and repeat the process. So actually, once you've written something that can index a page, and you can index lots of pages, um, mm. I, 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 I could go on, but maybe you get the idea. And it, yeah. It, it's not insurmountable, whether it's something you'd want to do mm. <laughs> with, a, with a Key Stage 2 class. Um, I, I don't know, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's kind of mixed. I mean, if you're looking at teaching skills, then, then big data problems and, and starting to think about that is mm. a, a huge area of, of current interest. Um, mm. if, if you look at who is making a big success out of the internet right now, Amazon, mm. Google, and Apple, Microsoft with SkyDrive, iCloud. Mm. These are all things looking at crawling big amounts of data and indexing them. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I must have... The, the funny thing is, I, uh, I mean, forgetting Python for a second, um, we could have a discussion on that another time, really. Um, but I, I have to say, just listening to you explaining that, I mean, I, um, and I, I've been doing a bit of research, you know, uh, the, the sort of indexing side of things. I can see myself working up some sort of game to do that, 
or some sort of activity uh, away from programming to sort of so that the kids get some idea of what this is yeah. what it's doing. <clears throat> um, and Graham, didn't you have something that you you had uh, around? Yeah, that, that was a bit that was a bit simpler, really. Mm -hmm. um, that was really just to to get the children to understand that Google wasn't the internet, but Google went out and got data off lots of computers all over the world and and it didn't matter where they were um, and it was really to teach children you know that the the Google you give it some keywords and it goes around and it gives those keywords to all these computers and they look for them and they give them stuff back so it was a very simplistic way of explaining it that was really done for I suppose um, you know year two year two children hmm. um, I was accused of oversimplifying by a number of people, which you know, it was it was oversimplified intentionally because it had to be understood by year one and year two children, and this is kind of the problem I have. I mean, I don't think we necessarily have to make us, you know, get the children to program a, a search engine for them to understand the important point, which is that you know the data is is all held and and uh, somewhere and that you know the way you get it is by indexing it and an indexing game could teach them that mm -hmm. um, and some something I think the more we do this away from computers the better in some ways I don't know why but that's a kind of feeling I have yeah go for it Joe well, I just I stole Graham's stuff and kind of made it a little bit more kind of even more year one year two ish and I completely agree that it's the, it's the understanding and the demystifying so it's not magic you know it's it's about people actually mm. putting data in all these different places and you can't believe it because you don't know if it's true. Mm. Kind of saying it's all about the people, not just about the bits of wire and um, I can mm. agree it's the unplugged bit, which I mm. think they remember. And it's saying about kind of sowing the seeds when they're very young to actually not believe everything that's on the World Wide Web and to think mm. about, well, is it all about Google, so I completely agree. So I, I don't mind the fact that it's in, <laughs> mm. because I think there's a little bit that little children just do believe that everything's true if it's on a computer. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah, taking I Phil's know. idea. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was just thinking, take, taking Phil's idea, you could see how you, you know, you could get the children to write a news report, and some of them make something up, and some of it's true, yeah. and then you get the children to find the news report that they're looking for. So they could do, you know, the sort of thing Andy was talking about. They could, there could be three words they're looking for, and they count the number of times those words occur in each of the news reports, and then they take the news report that has the most, most number of of their words in. And then they read it, but then the decision is: is is this actually you know made up or is it true? Yeah. So you can, I think, by by doing it with children in this way, playing a game, um, they'll get a, a better understanding of it than if they mm. actually try and program in Python, a, you know, a search engine. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. Let's let's leave that one go for a little bit. Although I, I did like the idea, and I might get have a mess about, but that's another <laughs> issue. Um, Mark, you wanted to come in, go for it. Well, mine was was similar to that it, along the lines of if the children have built their own web pages taken from the other point of view you build you build some web pages and you put whatever you want in it and then you let the search engine find your web page well you know for sure that that isn't owned by Google because you you made it yourself yeah. mm. and you you get some people in the class to put in absolute rubbish into the web page and other people to put in some decent stuff and uh, they can find that they you know it, it may take a little while for the search engines to discover it, but after a while, they, they're on, mm. their own pages are published and searchable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's quite a nice idea, actually. And 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 you don't you could, okay, you could you could heart you could um, code those directly from HTML, or you could use something like Coffee Cup or or an HTML editor, or even a Word. To be honest with you, mm. you know, to make some links, you know, depending on the age of the kids. Yeah, that that I wonder how long it would take. For, to find those, I suppose, it, uh, and and index them and 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 get them on there. Really, I don't know. That's something to bung back to the Cask community and let the Google heads uh, come back with a 
a, a really complicated answer which none of us will understand. No, no, I didn't say that. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it, pro probably a, a few days. Um, oh, right, okay. Um, and so, I mean, I, I mean, I know from experience, you know, the, the time has passed where Google re-indexed your site regularly, so it is it hard to, to know, but it, multiple days, so it might be a hard exercise to run with with youngsters mm. because the, the time lab will be unpredictable and potentially long. Although it's it's the type of thing if we knew it was if we knew it was two weeks, say, then um, it's the type of thing you could almost you could you can almost do the coding at one end and then, you know, go and check it again and see what's happened to it and whether it's actually been indexed at the other end. Anyway, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting off on one. Let's uh, let's 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 back away from the from my new tie and come back. Go I, on. I think I think if you attach pages to a really active site, um, mm -hmm. you're going to actually get get the information um, returned quicker. Right. Um, okay. And it's going to depend on the activity on it. But yeah, I mean, maybe for um, year one, the the wait could be too long. But um, <laughs> as they go higher up the school, um, I I don't think two weeks is. I mean, how often do you get to see your um, the te the children you're teaching? Um, so yeah, in my case, it's only going to be two lessons later. Yeah, mine's once a week. So yeah, I mean, that's that's, that's it's sort of doable. But uh... maybe you should um, edit the fill bag page on Wikipedia. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, that 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 that'll take about three months to um to be crawled. I'm sure. Anyway, let's not get into that. Um, listen, I think we've. I mean, we're we're now at five past um five past nine. I I don't know about you, but I think this has been a a useful Cass hangout. Um, what's what are mm. people's feelings? Got a thumbs up there. Thank you very. Thank you very, very much for joining. I mean, when, when, uh, next one, sort of ha what length of time is useful, is going to work for people, is not too much? Um, and and I'll, I'll, let's make sure we put some, some good sort of curricular things we can discuss as well in there, you know, like we've had today, because I think that those have been, you know, good. The algorithms thing's been fun, and um, and, and discussing this area at the end has been, been enjoyable as well. So, um, so let's just go down briefly. Um, Andy, sort of ha length of time to the next one that's useful for you. Um, I'm 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 pretty open. I think um, Tuesday is better than Wednesdays. Okay. What What are people's feelings? Um, quick thumbs up. Who Who's preferred this Tuesday than the Wednesday? Okay. Oh, that's okay. Um, Mark's in the middle. Well, yeah. Oh, David's in the middle. Sorry, <laughs> Mark's in the middle as well. <laughs> okay. Um. David, um, a useful session this evening? Yeah, definitely. Only just apologies that I haven't been here for years, months, whatever it was. But no, I can see all <laughs> your, your little reasons just behind us earlier. So. Yes, they're all about the place. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely to see you now, then, mate. Um, no problem. Graham, sort of, how often do we do we want to well, do? Well, I mean, I, I've, I, w I would have to say personally after Easter now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just I've got so much on, but you know you could kind of say at least one one and a half term, if not you know more than that. Should we go for one and a half term? Does that sound reasonable length of time, Mark? It's reasonable. Um, and please, 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 when I uh, can everybody get to the to the to the suggestion or idea, please do put things on there yourself. You know, because otherwise you end up with my rubbish. I no, no, my um less you know. The best things come from you guys. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so, you know, please do put things on. And I know, um, David, uh, you had quite a few things that your school's doing at the moment. So, so maybe you can put some, some. You know, we're gonna have a discussion around some of the CS Unplug stuff or or some of the stuff that you're doing for next time. You know, yeah, definitely. Do some I, stuff I, on I there. can prepare some what what we've done in school and lessons learned, that kind of thing. We can yeah, do that. yeah, that would be lovely actually. And if anybody wants to do a sort of little little little. Um, hook in, and then and then and then we can discuss it afterwards. You know, of things you've done, or things that worked, or or things we, like the like the um, the the internet search engines thing. That, you know, that we all need to think about that. That would be great. Does anybody want to say anything more before we just end? So this, um, is there any way that we can kind of share anything? 
Have you got a learning platform where you've got stuff on there and things that I can nick? Because I've got <laughs> Graham stuff and most of Phil's stuff. So is there anything I can nick off you now? No. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, if, if you message me afterwards on uh, Google Plus, then we'll swap details and we can. Okay. That'd be great. I'm just interested in stealing things. Right <laughs> <laughs> Stealing's good. The Google Thank of you, this group. <laughs> So unless anyone has got anything else to say, uh, thank you very, very much for coming and I will arrange something for, for after Easter for our next one. Thanks yeah. very much. Phil. Phil. Sorry. Phil, Phil yep. if you've got a minute, just to hang on, just to talk about um, Southampton Conference. Yeah, sure, sure, yeah, yeah, no worries. Um, I'll, I'll end the broadcast and then I'll, <laughs> I'll make another one if that's, if that's all right. Is that okay, Graham? Yes, yeah, sure, yeah. Because this one's be this one's public, so yeah, yeah. Cheerio.